Are you planning your first trip to Bali? Well, don't worry, because we've got you covered. From observing local customs, safety, how to get around, hotels, and a bunch more stuff. And I brought along my Balinese friend Deepta to give you some local insider tips. So sit back and relax, because we're here to give you all the info you need to have a great vacation. Okay, let's get oriented first. Don't go here. Abud's the reason to come to Bali. The east is nice, so is the west, but it's far. All right, now for some detail. Okay, for all you guys in the back row, this is for you. If you're coming to Bali, you have to go to Abud. For me, Abud is the reason for coming to Bali. This little town has been drawing travelers and artists since the 1920s because of its natural beauty and incredible culture. Abud is up in the hills surrounded by terrace rice paddies and rivers flowing through steep jungle valleys. But Abud is best known for culture, famous for traditional dances, ceremonies, and festivals. There's tons of shopping, restaurants, spas, whitewater rafting, rice terrace hikes, and most of Bali's best hotels are in or around Abud. We think Abud is a Bali must-see and that you should budget at least two or three days. But to set expectations, this small town isn't as small as it used to be. It sometimes feels a bit overrun by foreigners like me, and the traffic can be bad. But it's still wonderful and totally worthwhile. Check out our What to Do in Bali video for a list of things to do around Abud. When most people think about Bali, they think about South Bali. Kutub, Seminyak, and Jimbrin Bay, all close to the airport. I wouldn't be surprised if you also think about long white sand beaches. You should know that most beaches in Bali are black sand. A lot of areas have steep cliffs and rugged coastlines, which are great for views, but not so great for beach time. Many, if not most, are also kind of dirty. If you're coming from North America or Europe, there are hundreds of better beach destinations closer to home. South Bali, Kuta and Seminyak in particular are crowded, overpriced, and a little bit soul-sucking. They've got some decent beaches for sure and lots of nightlife, but the hotels tend to be cookie-cutter mega resorts. And the hawkers on the beach can get annoying. If you're looking for a more authentic, local experience in Bali, I'd steer clear of these tourist hotspots altogether. You won't miss anything, I promise. We love Uluwatu because of its rugged, beautiful coastline, and it's only 30 minutes from the airport. So it's a great way to get some beach time and ease in or out of Bali. We have a great hotel recommendation there, but if you don't have a big budget, one option is to stay somewhere without a view and hit a beach club like this for the day. The Single Fin Bar in Uluwatu is also a great place to catch a beautiful sunset. East Bali is where the mountains meet the ocean where rice fields give way to coconut plantations, and where everything feels laid back and unhurried, with far fewer tourists. It's at least one and a half hours from the airport, but around Mangus and Kandidasa, there are some nice beaches and some of Bali's best hotels, including the Amankila. East Bali is also home to the sacred Mount Ogung, Bali's tallest volcano. Maybe the best kept secret in East Bali is Ahmed, a small fishing village with clear water and green hills. It's also home to some of Bali's most significant temples, like the Tirta Ganga Water Palace. And if you want to get away from the crowds, Ahmed is hard to beat. With that said, it can be a bit grungy, the beaches are rocky, and the area is probably better suited to backpackers and budget travelers. West Bali is another option, but it's pretty remote, almost four hours from the airport, and there are a few hotels in that area. But if you are into diving, this is your best bet in Bali. And we do have a great hotel rec to make there in our Bali ebook. Okay, let's shift gears for a minute into our speed round. The international airport is referred to as Denpasa and is in South Bali. Most tourists need a visa, but most people qualify for visa on arrival, but you should double check. 
If you qualify, line up after you land and pay about 35 US dollars with cash or credit. Bali's official language is Indonesian, but Balinese and English are also widely spoken. English should get you where you need to go 98% of the time. Credit cards and debit cards are accepted at 95% of hotels and many restaurants. In terms of cash, the Indonesian rupiah is the main currency and there are ATMs all over the island. Expect to pay 2 or 3% transaction fees. Plugs look like this. Power is 230 volts. Don't drink the tap water, but ice quality in Bali is regulated by the government. Even in more remote areas, mobile data connections work, but they're not great. Wi-Fi is available in almost all hotels, but speeds can vary dramatically. Don't expect super fast speeds anywhere. Drug possession and trafficking are treated as major crimes. If you're confused about this, watch the film Midnight Express. Same goes for driving under the influence. Ladies don't go topless. Beer is cheap and locally made. Wine's expensive and is imported. Mosquitoes like Bali as much as tourists, so bring some bug spray. Dungay fever still exists here. Hotels and drivers often use WhatsApp, so you should download it. There's been a lot of news lately about foreigners behaving badly in Bali. Please don't be one of those people. If you visit a temple or attend a ceremony, here are some tips to help you fit in. Cover your legs and shoulders. If you didn't get this memo until the last minute, you can usually grab a sarong for about three bucks, often near the gate of a temple. No sarong? Then women should wear a knee-length skirt or a dress and something to cover their shoulders. Men should wear long pants and a shirt with short sleeves is fine. You should also take off your shoes before entering a temple, but don't take off your shoes to enter the temple grounds. If in doubt, look for a pile of shoes. Lastly, try to be discreet when taking pics during ceremonies. Remember, these temples are sacred spaces for the Balinese, so please be a good ambassador. Alright, now that you know what part of the island's best for you, where should you stay? Well, we visited 30 hotels in Bali to come up with the ultimate resort guide. From ultra luxe resorts to stylish bargain hotels and everything in between. And if you really want to amp up your Bali experience, check out the Swank Guide's videos about what to do here and about local culture and customs. If you love food, then Bali's for you. Blending Indonesian and Indian flavors, traditional Balinese cuisine is its own unique thing. The food here uses lots of spices, coconut, and herbs. If you don't like spicy, tell the staff and often they can turn down the heat a bit. Food can also be quite cheap. Expect to pay as little as two US dollars for a meal if you're on a budget. Bali's vibrant street food scene is an even cheaper way to eat with tons of great food options available on many corners. The vendor may not speak English, so just point and grin a lot. If you need some comfort food, Western food is readily available in many places. So it's always warm and humid in Bali, with temps averaging around 82 degrees Fahrenheit, aka 28 degrees C. There are two seasons here, dry and hot and rainy and hot. Dry season's from May to September, and the rainy season lasts from October to April when heavy downpours are pretty common, but usually don't last all day. I've been in Bali in October, November, and December, and I've never been rained out. The peak tourist season is July and August, so expect to pay the most then. Around Christmas and Chinese New Year, expect high prices and crowds too, despite some rain. Some of the best times to come to Bali are May, June, and September during dry season, and when people are back to school and work. Like I said, I've been to Bali five times in the last 20 years and never felt unsafe. Despite Bali being a pretty safe place, you should still be careful. Petty crime happens in Bali, but mostly in the busy tourist areas such as Kuta and Semenyak. There's really more risk crossing the street or renting a motorbike. The roads in Bali can be chaotic with many motorcycles, cars, and trucks jockeying for the same space. So be careful when crossing the street and like any other place, Common sense goes a long way. Bali doesn't have a public transport system, so you'll have to figure something else out. 
With a busy shooting schedule, I opted for hiring a private car and driver. It's quite cheap compared to most parts of the world, with prices ranging from about 25 USD for a two-hour ride from one hotel to another, or for an airport pickup to most hotels. A half day for a private car will likely run you between 35 and 50 bucks. You can also rent a motorbike, but that's how most foreigners are injured in Bali. Another option is to grab a ride on the back of a motorcycle if you're just going around town. You can get across a boot for two or three bucks and it's fun. There's also this more official Ojek motorcycle service. Look for the guys with the green vests and download the app. And of course, there are taxis. Those will run you two to three times what a motorbike will. Thanks for watching and see us in the next video.